I will be talking more about quality today, you know, uh, though we, as Anil said, you know, how it is called 50% of the modules globally. But today's session, I am going to talk more about the quality of modules and uh, how it impacts your return. So, just trying to empower, like, your, the way you do a selection has an impact on the way it performs. Just one slide on DuPont and its product. Basically, we make uh, three critical components go into making a module and itself. One is called as a silver paste. The one what you see when you see the module, the lines called the bus bars and the fingers, uh, that's being made by DuPont. It's very crucial in managing the efficiency of the module or improving the efficiency of the module as well as power conduction. The second one what we make is, uh, is called Tidlar, that's our brand name. It's a back sheet film. 50% of the module is covered by a back sheet. You see a module, the top is glass, which is reasonably secure. The bottom 50% is a back sheet. You know? And this is a module which stays in the field for 25 years, subject to a lot of environmental hazards. And this back sheet is supposed to protect it for 25 years. And this back sheet is just around 300, 300 microns thick. So it's, it's like one third of an mm, and that's got a big role in protection in the module. The third one, what we make, it's one of our uh, acquired product from Dow Forming, which is silicon sealant, which goes into you know sealing the laminate, the frame, and as well as uh, you know junction box fixing and the uh, potting application. Now that that is just about the product, but what I'm going to talk about is on the bottom side where we do something called the reliability program, uh, where globally we access sites, not the brand new sites, but sites which are working for a couple of years. Maybe, you know, typically a module defect starts uh, from third, fourth year onwards. A new module will not show a defect uh, for the first typical 20% of its life, that's five years. Thereafter, the, the issues will start cropping up, you know. And we, we select those sites which are old, which have uh, you know, installed modules, and we do a detailed assessment of the module and as to how they have performed after installation, what are the issues so that we learn from that and we also share the knowledge. Okay, just to give you a quick background as to what a module construction is. It's a pretty simple construction. I mean, you start with a glass. It's actually the inverse which happens when you manufacture. Start with the glass. Then you have a layer of encapsulant. Typically, EVA is a material. Uh, then you lay uh, the cells in the respective series, you know, for connection and all the ribbons, everything get connected across. Then again you call it the layer of encapsulant, then put a layer of back sheet, take it through a lamination process. The whole thing get fused uh, and then fix the frame. It's a very simple thing, it just has around seven or eight elements that make the module. But the thing is, it's a whole laminated process and when you see a module A, module B or module C, it just looks absolutely the same because it's laminated really can't make or judge the quality of modules by simply looking at it. You know, its performance only is a parameter and unfortunately in modules, the performance degradation starts over a couple of years. So, the point what we are trying to make here is when you decide to go and purchase a module, you need to look at these six or seven elements right ahead of time and try to define the technical specification of this. Like my glass should be like this, my encapsulant should be like this, my cell thickness should be like this, this quality of you know ribbons, etc. So that you know the product what comes to you in a fully laminated form is of good quality. Now coming specifically to back sheet, because we specialize in back sheet, it's a 300 micron layer, and in 300 microns there are three layers. There's an outer layer film which is hardly around 25 microns thick, very, very small. We're talking about you know microns. Then there is a core layer, which is a PET layer, supposed to insulate the uh, module electrically as well as and also uh, prevent water ingression or you know reduce it to as much as possible and allow both way ingression and uh, expulsion of water. And there is a tie layer, which is just a function of you know attaching itself with the whole assembly. So I was talking about what happens in in, in, a, in a back in a module. Uh, if we go out and stand in the sun for five hours, you know, we get that impact, you know, we can't sustain that. And we are talking over a product which has to stand in the sun for 25 years. There are multiple issues which happen in the module. One is a transmitted UV, which states come from the top. Uh, you can't avoid it. We are, we are a country blessed with good insulation. 
along with good insulation also comes the UV. Then you have a reflected UV, which is a reflected part uh, from the bottom. Uh, and it's also important because we talk about bifacial modules generating uh, power from the back. You know, that's the extent of impact you see also from the back. Then you also have issues of moisture, where it can be rains, it can be you know just humidity across coastal areas, or it can be the water used in you know in the process, etc. Then there's a temperature issue, which it's actually a cycling issue. You know, every single day when the generation is at its peak, the module reaches a temperature of almost around 70, 75 degrees. That's the cell temperature inside. And during the same night, it reaches ambient. Ambient room temperature can be as low as 30 degrees and in some cases much lower also. So you can imagine every single day this module goes through this delta of almost 50 degrees. It's a continuous expansion and contraction if it's happening within the model, which we don't see from the naked eye, but that's a stress. Then you also have issues about abrasion. If this is in, let's say, a place like Rajasthan or highly dusty areas, you have wind, uh, you know, blowing, carrying the small dust, you know, it keeps scraping across. So, module looks simple, but yes, it goes through a lot of, lot of stresses in the field. And uh, it's, that's the reason it becomes pretty important that, you know, every part of the module is uh, of good quality to sustain its 25 year life. During our, uh, you know, examination, we found, you know, these are a typical kind of defect, and I thought I would uh, show this to the audience here. Uh, you have cell related issues where you get cell cracks, you got hot spots because of shadowing and all. And uh, you also have uh, snail trails if there is a micro cracks which get generated uh, in the cell for whatever reason, either bad quality of cell or inspection uh, goes through on a cell or bad handling, you know, it goes through trucks. In fact, in, in many uh, overseas countries, uh, the truck goes with a sensor to sense the uh, the amount of, you know, uh, bumps and humps which the truck traces so that, you know, the module pallet doesn't get affected. But, you know, Indian road conditions are not really uh, that good. We take it through that. The third thing which happens is, you know, last moment commissioning, deadline commissioning. You know, every kind of uh, manpower is used. They just, you know, roughly handle the modules. So, you may end up damaging the module within without knowing that a damage is being done. Backheat cracking is one of the major issues which we have been seeing. I'll just show the you know, result of the study what we have done globally and it will be very enlightening. Uh, and the moment backheat cracks, you, you are exposing the whole back of it uh, to moisture going inside. The moment moisture goes inside, you are you are allowing a moisture inside a system which is electrically active with a thousand or thousand five hundred volts, uh, which has got uh, heat, which has got metal, the ribbons and all, corrosion will start, then the degradation rate will increase from whatever being committed by the module manufacturer. These are causes where you know your power loss keeps increasing over the year. You also have issues regarding uh, encapsulant, browning and delamination. Uh, browning and is an indication of polymer degradation. And it also prevents the sunlight from reaching the cells. The fourth one is a uh, junction bomb related issues, bad quality of that. Hmm? or bad quality of earthing used in the system, which can, you know, also help, uh, you know, uh, make a, a good diet also detective. Just two slides on uh, the comparison. See, we made a study up to 2018, and then we added on some more installation up to 2019, uh, which also had a lot of Indian installations. As of 2018, we had uh, done more than one gigawatt of inspection. I'll just take you quickly through the summary, I think we're short of time. So, amongst the population what we inspected, around 78% was not defective, but you had, there's a defective fixing. <laughs> so, you had 12% of the cells which were defective, you had back sheet of 9.5% and encapsulate of 1.3. Now, what's important is, I'll take you to the next slide. This is 2019 where we practically doubled our inspection, you know, the number of modules inspected. From 12% cells, it went up to 14% defect. Not a big uh, change though, but back sheet from 9% it went to 14% and encapsulant from uh, 1% it reached 5%. This is big jumps. Uh, now, this is something you need to worry about. You can also correlate it to the aggressive pricing done by manufacturers uh, and 
maybe cost compromises to accommodate that kind of a, a margins within that. But anyhow, the bottom line is, when, as an investor, as a developer, I think it's also your responsibility uh, to understand whom you are buying, what kind of materials they are using, and how it can help you achieve that 25 years of life. Anyhow, I am just quickly running through, uh, uh, I do not want to eat up on others' time. Uh, we have some more detailed analysis, this is like some more snap of the back sheet cracks, it typically happens. P PVDF is one kind of back sheet which is uh, very largely used in India and a uh, lot of cracks are uh, you know, appearing on that, a lot of defects are appearing. Another back sheet, polyamide also was uh, you know, introduced to the market around 7-8 years back, today it is withdrawn because the, the damages is so uh, huge. Uh, manufacturers withdrew it, but then who all have purchased that seven years back with that polyamide back seat do have an issue now because they need to stay with that module for 25 years. Just a comparison in a single site, this is a site in uh, US, uh, it's a, seven, a 12 megawatt site, 12 years old. So we found three kinds of modules. You can see, you know, same environmental conditions, same electrical conditions. You see how the back sheets behave in the uh, thing. This is where the quality matters. A more closer photo of uh, one against the other. A lot of people also go through rooftop uh, installations, uh, you know, in, in this part of the country. I uh, would also like to tell you is rooftop is more stressful in some areas for a module because you have a higher UV, you have higher temperatures. Higher UV because roof is a good, uh, you know, uh, it reflects more UV compared to a normal ground with grass across. Temperature in cities are typically higher when compared to, you know. Uh, rural areas uh, and also the, the base being a roof uh, also contains, you know, the reflects uh, this thing, uh, the temperature to the, to the back sheet. So you need to be more careful when you are looking more specifically on, uh, on uh, uh, rooftop because rooftop also goes through a not so a proper methodological OEM process because these are smaller installations when compared to a large ground water one where a professional OEM agency may manage it and identify faults, but rooftops are typically ignored because many of them are at high roofs, nobody goes to even clean it. Uh, it's difficult to even watch and you know, make sure you know, things are in order. There are further analysis as to why back sheets are cracking, but I think I can perhaps skip this, maybe we can talk uh, later on you know, uh, somebody has got interest. And different testing methodologies are also being involved. You know, so I think I'll just one minute. Uh, this is one slide, you know, how things, uh, I mean, the good thing is, I think, world over, a lot of institutes are recognizing this. So, these are typical graphs of degradation, you know. Uh, you have all heard about degradation, you know. It's, it's like, what causes degradation? Basically, this chart says, what causes degradation? It's an accepted part, like 0.7% per year is accepted part. So, on the left is what was defined as a causes of degradation in 2014. Uh, on the right, 2019, they redefined it to include two more parameters, something called as LETID, which typically happens in a monopop technology kind of thing, and also a back sheet degradation. So, more elements causing degradation are being handed, uh, you know, included in the process, so these need more attention. Just the last part, we are talking about a lot of bifacial modules across globally. Uh, DuPont has uh, innovated and invented uh, a transparent back sheet which can be used instead of the normal opaque back sheet for a bifacial module uh, has a lot of advantages. The same manufacturing process can be used, you don't need to tweak the manufacturing process. Plus, it's lightweight and you know it also has certain good properties which a back sheet typically has because it's, it's like a normal back sheet but transparent in nature. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen.